Hey there, everybody. This just arrived in the mail. Uh, let's get her open and see what we got. Okay, here it is opened up. What do we got in there? Oh, it's heavy, I'll tell you that. It's definitely got some weight. Okay, it looks like it's wrapped in a bunch of plastic here. Okay, there it is. Okay, here it is. You can see it has the Zord logo. It's got a rubber band on it. And it's got some information about the company, B.W. Baker Svord from New Zealand. And it's just tied on to, through the lanyard hole there. All right, let me look over this sheath really quick. I noticed that it is, it looks like a double wilt. Like it is super, super thick. I don't know if I have any sheaths from anywhere that are this thick. Now I heard there was supposed to be a drain hole in these sheaths and it does look like two little micro holes right there but I don't know if that's enough that it would actually drain water very well but who knows maybe. This is a fairly expensive knife. So I expect, I know they say it's like a rough old world uh, buoy, but I would like to see some good craftsmanship on it considering the money that's spent. A wide, very thick, hard leather sheath. Like you can tell this is real leather. It is heavy duty. Looks like it's stitched quite well. Now, let's see here. It's got like an old world kind of kind of snap on it there. Let me see if I can get that open. There we go. See that? Then it's got a real nice looking brass pin. What I do notice is this was riveted at the top. It has two rivets in it. And I've seen other videos, and there's some look copper, some look brass, mine are silver. And I noticed that this one looks like it's been ground away. Like maybe when they were smoothing the leather here, they actually took the edge off the rivet. Now, that's not going to hurt anything. Because it looks like the rivet is definitely intact. Just, I don't know, maybe for the money you would ex you would expect it to be a little better th than that, you know. But I don't want to give the impression that this is like low quality or anything because it certainly doesn't seem to be. It's super heavy. I think it's called Wedgewood is what the handles are made out of. I'm trying to get the camera to really focus on that. You can see there's a touch of roughness to it. But the coloration is different. It doesn't look like a lot of wood handles. It kind of resembles rosewood, walnut maybe, but something seems a bit different. Maybe it's like that way that grain looks almost black in it. But it's got three brass pins. It looks like the centers might be copper, but the camera is not picking that up super good 
There you can kind of see it. So it's like a copper pin inside of the brass. So that looks really nice. You can see it's full tang. Definitely full tang. And that is thick, man. I bet you that's just over a quarter of an inch thick. Think about my thumb here. You can see that's some serious, serious metal there. And this looks like it's at least an eighth of an inch thick, if not thicker. The hand guard there. Very nice. Well, here's what we've been waiting for. Let's draw this knife out and see what it looks like. Wow, look at that. It's completely smothered in oil or Vaseline. And look at that temper on that thing. Wow. I guess from what I've uh, seen of this, the spine is 90 degrees and it's a thick quarter inch spine there. And it has like a swedge tip on it. That's not sharpened, but it, it, how look how thick it is. How would you sharpen it? And it comes to a nice point, quite sharp. Looks needle sharp, but look at that. The spine, I guess, is softer than other parts of it, and that that's supposed to add to the strength. It's a convex grind blade and a massive one at that, like a true convex. And let me get this to focus. It says B W. See if you can see it. Baker, BW Baker, Svord, NZ for New Zealand. Man, that looks great. What a nice looking knife. And heavy. Ooh, is this thing heavy? Now you can see it's not sharpened right there. And that's so you can reach over the guard and choke up on it for doing fine carving tasks like feather sticks or something you might need to do. Usually a, a knife will have like a choil there notched out for your finger. This one just left it unsharpened so you can get up there. And it actually, it feels really secure, like quite comfortable considering how heavy this blade is. It definitely feels front heavy. I would guesstimate that the balance point is clear up here somewhere. This thing would make a great chopper. It's the Ford Von Timsky Ranger Bowie knife. This one's called the uh, VTB for Von Timsky Bowie. And they make a smaller one that's only six inches long. It's And it is the uh, VTR, the Von Timsky Ranger. And this is the Von Timsky Ranger buoy. But they just put VTB for buoy. Super heavy duty hand guard. Not loose at all. Full tang. Like when, what's weird is when you look at it this way, you only see the handle. So it may appear a touch thin, but you realize that that tang is at the very top and the very bottom. So it's actually quite wide. The handle scales are only about a quarter of an inch thick on each side of an even, oh, even larger than a quarter inch thick piece of steel in the middle. And this is made of L6 Swedish tool steel which has won several awards recently for being some of the best steel in the world for durability, edge retention, and strength. 
So that's kind of cool that that's what these are made from. It's very nice. I love that temper on it. Isn't that beautiful? Now, from what I've heard of these, these are meant to be used and abused. Like, you're not supposed to... Uh, they're not supposed to be pretty wall hangers, even though it is quite nice looking. But you're supposed to actually take these out and use them and give them a try and, and work them. They're like actual tools. And if you don't know the story of Von Timsky, there's many videos on YouTube about him. Uh being a forest ranger back in the old time, 1800s, I believe. And he made all of his men have a version of this knife that they all carried. And it was to fight off, like, the local tribes there. And, I guess, get New Zealand settled. But, wow, I love that convex edge. It's super nice looking. I bought this off of a website called Chicago Knife Works. And it was substantially less expensive compared to a lot of the other places that sell it. There's people wanting over $300 for this knife. And a lot of places I found it was $245 to $250. And there's different style sheaths. There's sheaths that have copper up here and copper on here some have brass up here and brass down here some of the older ones had rivets the whole way around seemed like an excessive amount of rivets but this company chicago knife works had the best deal way better deal than everybody else and this certainly does not appear to be a factory second in any way the only thing I can see on it is this little flat edge on this one rivet, and that's it. And it's a pretty nice, nice looking buoy knife. You could do a lot worse than this. This is it, right out of the package. All I've done is wipe some of the oil off the blade there. I don't even know if I got it all off, but I just gave it a quick wipe down. Got a sheet of printer paper here. Let's see how sharp this is straight from the factory. And remember, the blade doesn't even start till up here a ways, so. Very sharp. Quite nice. Look at that. Very, very, very nice. Let's see if this thing is hair shaving sharp. Yeah, I'm probably going to regret this. That was a... It got some hair on there. And I got a beautiful little bald spot on my arm. Here is this gorgeous hunk of steel. Feels really nice in the hand. It's got about a 10 inch 
blade, maybe 10 and a quarter, because that's about where it's sharp. It's about 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half, clear up to the hand guard. And it is about 17 inches overall. And just the handle itself is about five and a half. And I've got large slash extra large hands. And you can see I've got some room to spare there. It definitely feels nice. These edges are rounded, so it's quite comfortable. I would not say that this is an uncomfortable handle. You might, it's a little slippery. You might want some grip tape or something like that to give you a little more grip, but it sure is nice. Okay, here it is beside the K-Bar United States Marine Corps fighting knife. And here it is beside the K-Bar Swabby combat zombie knife. And this is it beside the Cold Steel 1917 Frontier Bowie knife. You can see that the Cold Steel is a bit longer. It has a longer, skinnier swedge. It is under a quarter of an inch thick, not quite a quarter. Here, and you can see it's thicker also, even at the swedge. Super thick. This thing is meant for like chopping and combat. See the difference there? Oh, this is blued. So that's a blued steel. Very, very nice. And this is it beside the Schrade SCH 45 Leroy Bowie knife. SCHF 45. See, that's a nice big Bowie knife. How about this one just for the heck of it? Because the handles looked a bit similar. This is the Timberwolf or Timber Rattler sawback Bowie knife with an almost mirror finish on it, but it's barely an eighth of an inch thick, very lightweight stainless steel. And this is heavy, thick Swedish L6 high carbon steel, tool steel. Okay, and this is it beside a custom Resident Evil 4 Krauser Combat Fighting Knife. And it came with a massive sheath. This seems like lower quality leather though and not as thick as this one. But this is 5160 spring carbon spring steel. And it is thick. It's probably at about a quarter of an inch thick. And it's got micarta handles. It's actually micarta. It's got a mirror polish, but I got oil on the blade. And this is a heavy, serious, serious knife. And then this one's a touch thicker. It's just over a quarter of an inch. It's about the same weight. Like I said, this is Swedish L6 high carbon steel. And what matters about this steel is how they tempered it. And you can tell they really went to town making sure the edge had the right hardness and the spine had the right uh, softness and everything in between. This thing is meant as a true tool to be really used but I believe me, this is no slouch. Okay, here's some stuff that comes with your new Svord Von Timsky Bowie knife. This has some product information. 
shows you how to sharpen it because you want a correct convex edge. This is also your warranty. You got to fill this out and send it back into the company within 14 days of purchase to have your knife registered because they have a guaranteed against the breakage. And it says all sword handcrafted blades are guaranteed for life against breakage. If a sword knife ever does prove defective under normal use, of course, this does not cover neglect or intentional misuse, return it directly to sword and it will be replaced or repaired without charge. We are proud to present a handcrafted knife because these are made by hand in New Zealand. So that's pretty cool. It says all sword knives are individually hardened and tempered using a unique and time-honored secret heat treatment process. Each sword knife is hand ground on a water-cooled stone. And that's to get that, uh, what they call the Baker convex edge and to not mess up the temper of the blade. So that is very good. Made from finest quality Swedish high carbon steel, which I believe is L6. This is a limited edition replica. This is a picture of Von Timsky, Forest Ranger Bowie Knife. Here's another picture of him. Gives you a little backstory on the man. Actually, a really interesting story, but I don't want this to be a two-hour video, so. I truly hope that you enjoyed this video and consider purchasing one of these Bowie knives because they are dynamite. Until you hold one in your hand in person and even see this sheath, I don't think you can quite appreciate it from a camera. But they are pricey, so you have to save up your pennies to get, get one of these. I, I think this one went for about $179 at Chicago Knife Works. It was the cheapest I found. And it was free shipping. B.W. Baker, Svord, New Zealand. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Joe Doomsday, signing out.